welcome to Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about a creature that comes to us from 2nd edition, 3rd edition, 4th edition, basically every edition of D&D, and even Pathfinder. That creature would, of course, be the Stained Glass Golem. These guys are made from, surprisingly enough, stained glass. And they're often indistinguishable from a regular pane of stained glass, often fashioned in the shape of a knight. However, these knights come to life right out of the stained glass window pane, often under the control of some magic user or someone who paid a lot of money to a magic user. And they've got some really unique traits and abilities that you won't find many other places. So today, as always, I'm going to talk about just what these guys can do in battle, and of course how you can use them in your game. Normally I would also talk about modifications I would make to this creature to kind of spice up what you would find in the old books instead of just converting it straight up. However, I basically created this version of the stained glass golem by looking at what I thought was cool about all other four versions of it I was able to find. So between all that and just a couple minor touches, I was able to come up with the conversion that I'm going to present you with today. And being that it is, like I said, kind of an amalgamation of all these different editions, there's no need to really do a modification section of the video because this whole thing is more or less homebrewed at this point. But anyways, let's get into it, starting with... Unlike a lot of golems, these guys are medium sized. They're about the size of your average human. And they've got an average AC to match. However, what they might lack in a ridiculous armor class, they do make up for by having even more magic immunity than most golems do, which is saying something because most golems are very immune to very many different kinds of magic. And of course, they've got that pesky magic resistance, which means they get advantage whenever they roll a save against any magical effect. However, all these extra resistances don't come for free. They do have to pay a pretty hefty price, and that is being vulnerable to thunder damage. Granted, thunder damage isn't as common as, say, fire or cold damage, but oftentimes the spells that deal thunder damage do a fair amount of it. So if a stained glass golem is targeted by a spell such as shatter, it is going to do a crazy amount of damage, which makes sense because Shatter was basically designed as a hard counter to this creature when you really look at it. I mean, it's a golem made of glass, what do you expect? However, being made of glass also means that its longsword is especially sharp. Its glass longsword attack causes not only the regular damage of a longsword, but also bleeding damage. This functions very similarly to the bleeding attack that the chain golem had from a couple weeks ago, but basically it forces the target to make a save, if they fail, they take some extra damage, and then they take that damage every turn until they can make a successful medicine check to stop the bleeding. And being so ridiculously sharp also means that these creatures crit on a 19 or a 20. Back in 3rd edition, this is what we would call having a keen weapon, but basically they have an extra 5% chance to roll a critical hit against anyone, which is nothing to sneeze at. Especially when you consider that this thing gets two longsword attacks, so it's probably going to get at least one or two crits within the span of a total combat. And this creature is not just all brawn, it's got a couple nifty tricks up its glass sleeves. One of those tricks is called Spell Reflection, which works probably exactly the way you're thinking it does. Whenever this creature is targeted by a spell that targets just it specifically, so like an Eldritch Blast or a Firebolt, something like that, as a reaction, it can reflect that spell back on the person who cast it at them. Meaning that if you cast Eldritch Blast on one of these guys, it can just turn its body in such a way where it reflects it right back at you. Now granted, it uses up its reaction to do this, so if it does use this ability, it can't make an attack of opportunity and it can't reflect another spell if it gets targeted by more than one in the same round. However, this is a great combat trick to whip out against players who might not know exactly what they're going up against. Plus, if it's an attack that would cause damage that it's not immune to, it avoids that damage altogether. Now, all of that's good and fine, but this creature's signature ability is what really makes it deadly. The Stained Glass Golem can use an ability called Prismatic Burst. This functions exactly the same way as the spell Prismatic Spray, except it affects a 60-foot radius centered on the stained glass golem. If you're not familiar with how prismatic spray works, I'll explain it to you. Basically, you shoot forth a ray, and any targets who are in that area of effect have to make a dexterity save, pretty standard stuff. If they fail, they take full damage, and if they succeed, they take half damage. However, what's different about this spell is you roll to randomly determine the effect. On a roll of 1 to 5, it does some sort of damage, like lightning damage, cold damage, acid damage, you get it. On a roll of six or seven, it has some sort of effect. I can't remember which is which, but one of those rolls will petrify you if you fail your save, 
And the other one will teleport you to a different plane, kind of like a banishment spell, except it's permanent. And God help you if your attacker rolls an 8, because on a roll of an 8, you re-roll twice, ignoring further results of 8, of course. This is a 7th level spell, so it's nothing to mess around with. While the rest of its attacks might be a nuisance, they wouldn't be something you would expect from a CR8 creature, as far as threat-wise. They don't seem so bad. But when it can unleash a prismatic spray, but it's a radius effect that can hit almost everyone in the party depending on how it's positioned, that is truly terrifying. Granted, it's very unlikely to be one of the two rays that will effectively take you out of the game until the party can solve that problem, but taking the amount of damage that a prismatic spray does is never a good thing. Now again, when we look at this golem, considering it's CR, it doesn't have a crazy high armor class or an insane amount of hit points, it is deceptively delicate though. And honestly, at the risk of making a horrible pun, this creature is in every way a true glass cannon. It's not going to be super hard to take down, but it is going to do immense amounts of damage before you can kill it. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to talk too much about modifications, and I'm really not, um, because, again, this was just kind of an amalgamation of all these different versions of the Glass Golem from past editions. I did just want to talk about a couple minor ideas I have. I didn't actually put anything in the stat block for this, but this is more for you. If you have a very specific need for this creature, this might be a way you can do it. Um, because these creatures are golems and they're meant to look like stained glass masterpieces, you could easily make it a large creature. So instead of having a medium sized humanoid shaped glass thing, you could make it a stained glass mural of a frost giant or something, some kind of large or huge creature. Or if you wanted to give it some extra spells and maybe increase the CR a little bit, you could give, make it a stained glass depiction of a cleric in a church or a wizard, something like that. So it can do everything the stained glass golem can do, except it can also cast a couple spells. Or you could even make it something like a dragon and give it a prismatic spray breath attack. I mean, that would be very lethal, but just an idea. Really the only reason I want to talk about this modification section is just to mention that the only thing you're limited by when it comes to the shape a stained glass golem takes is your creativity. So if it's thematic for it to look like a mind flare, or maybe it takes on the shape of a dire wolf or something, who knows, whatever thematically makes sense for you, you can just use all the same stats and everything, except instead of a long sword attack, maybe it has a glass bite if it's an animal of some kind. At the end of the day, it's essentially an automaton, so... You have my official blessing to make this into all manner of ridiculous shapes and sizes. Now, as you can probably assume from just the idea of what this creature is, it is very ornate just by its nature. Something like this would work very well where you would expect to find stained glass, such as a temple or a noble's mansion, anywhere where there's a lot of money, really. Like any golem, these creatures can effectively function as a guardian, for good or evil, depending on who their owner or creator is. Maybe the king in a palace sits unguarded in his throne room, but in reality, all of the beautiful stained glass murals along the walls of said throne room are actually golems that will spring to life if a threat enters his vicinity. As such, these guys also work as great minions for vampires in their giant lofty manners. Or, again, like I touched on, as temple guardians for some kind of organized religion. I could definitely see an order of clerics having some of these golems created in their stained glass depictions. In fact, maybe they even have a stained glass golem who was made in the image of whatever god the temple was constructed to represent. So that way, if there are intruders, literally the stained glass seems to come to life in the vision of Paylor or Helm or whoever it is steps down to deal with the intruders. And playing up that whole idea that these creatures will surprise whoever they're attacking if they're not already out of their stained glass window pane, they make excellent encounters for a dungeon crawl if they're going through somewhere where there might be old ornate stained glass murals. A stained glass golem can totally catch the party by surprise if it just springs out and attacks them. And maybe you can even lead up to it by saying that the eyes on the mural seem to be following the party as they walk in. And if they touch any of the treasure in that seemingly unguarded treasure hoard, their exit and only way they know how to come in and out of this room is suddenly blocked off by creatures who were making up the walls just moments ago. Another way I thought of that you could use this creature as well is a sort of guardian for a merchant. Not every merchant can afford to have mercenaries at their beck and call following them throughout the countryside or necessarily want to, but maybe the merchant who seems pretty vulnerable and unassuming actually has one of these guys just hidden under a sheet in the back of his cart. Maybe there's a six foot long pane of glass that 
might look quite beautiful isn't for sale, of course, and if the merchant runs into any trouble, he invites his friend out of the stained glass window pane. Ultimately, I do think these creatures are very interesting, and it will definitely be something your players will remember. It's kind of a spin on that animate object, but to the next level. And as always, if you want the stat block for these guys, you can find a link to the Google document for that in the description below. And of course, if you are one of my supporters on Patreon, you can find on the Patreon page a uh, download link for the monster manual style stat block that I've made up for these guys. And while you're getting that stat block in the description below, feel free to check out all the other social media stuff, Facebook, Twitter if you want to get a hold of me, Discord if you want to chat with myself, other members of the community. Uh, we're generally pretty active over there. And if you do like what I do here and you want to support the channel, please uh, consider just subscribing. I have at least a couple new videos every week, and knowing you guys are out there watching gives me all the motivation in the world I could ever ask for. So, on that note, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it as always, and I will see you next time. <laughs>